Good morning, scholars. Happy Tuesday, and welcome to today's lesson, Module 6, Lesson 7. In today's lesson, we're going to plot points, use those points to draw lines in the coordinate plane, and then work together to describe what patterns we're seeing from those lines and from those points. Our fluency for today is going to be on page 23 of your packet. There's a blank space there, or I'm sorry, there's no blank space, but there is a coordinate plane that looks just like this on your packet. So I would like you to use what we've learned last week to figure out what the coordinate points are for A, B, C, and D. I will do A with you. So first I'm going to find point A on the coordinate plane, and there it is. Now to find um, the coordinates of point A, I start at the origin, and I go in my X, or, uh, my X axis first. And directly under A, I noticed that I went six units over. So the X coordinate of A is six. Now I go vertically on the Y axis to figure out what the Y coordinate of A is. And it looks like I went up five units, right? So the Y coordinate of A is five. And the X and Y together would be six comma five. I would like you to do the remaining ones and periodically look up and there will be answers on the screen for you to check your work. Here is another one, except now we're going from A all the way to G. You're doing the same thing as you did in the other slide. You're looking for the letters on the coordinate plane, and you're trying to figure out what the X and the Y coordinates are. The difference here that I would like to point out is that your units on the X and the Y axis are actually in decimals, they're not in whole numbers anymore. So I'm going from zero to five tenths to one whole. That means in between here are smaller units. Again, I'll do A with you. Here's A, I see the coordinate point. Now let me figure out the X and the Y. So I start at zero, I travel on the X axis first, go directly below A over here, and it looks like I stopped at five tenths. So my X coordinate is five tenths. Now I travel up on the Y axis vertically, and I get to A. Now when I go over, it looks like the Y coordinate is one whole, 1 1.0. So my X and Y pair for A is 5 tenths comma 1. I would like you to take some time, do the remaining ones. Again, look up on the screen and there will be answers there for you to check your work. All right, let's get started with our problem set. On the very left are the two pages we're going to cover in today's problem set. Those are pages 24 and 25. As I'm going over the problem set, I would like you to follow along and take notes because these notes will help you with your homework pages that look exactly like this problem set. All right, 
Let's begin with page 24 at the very top, number one. Number one says, complete the chart, then plot the points on the coordinate plane below. Here is my coordinate plane, and here is the table with the X and Y coordinates that I'm going to plot on this coordinate plane. It looks like number one has been done for us already, partially. My X coordinate is zero, my Y coordinate is one, together that makes zero comma one. So to plot that, I would start at zero comma zero, the origin, and I go one, I'm sorry, I go zero units over on my X axis because my X coordinate is zero. So I am not going to move any places this way to the left. I'm going to stay at zero. Then one is my y coordinate, so I'm going to move one up unit, and that right there would become zero comma one. Let's do the next one, x of two, y of three, which gives us two comma three. Let's plot that. So I start at zero, zero. I go over two units on the x axis, and I go up three units on the y-axis, and that would give me the point right there, two comma three. I'd like you to go ahead and plot four comma five and six comma seven onto this coordinate plane to the right, and I will go over them in just a bit. Okay, so the first one, four comma five, four units on the X axis, five units on the Y axis would be right there. And our last one, six comma seven, would be six units on the X axis and seven units on the Y axis. Now something that we should have done at the very beginning was label our axes. You notice they're not labeled here, and I should have started there actually. So let's take a step back, and let's label these axes here. The one that is always lying horizontally is your x-axis, and the one that goes up and down lying vertically is your y-axis. I'm sorry about that. All right, now let us go back to the problems. So we have drawn all the units that we need, and A, number one A, says use a straight edge to draw a line connecting these points. So these are the points right here that I just connected. If you don't have a ruler at home, remember you can use the edge of a book, the edge of a phone, anything that can help you draw a straight line. Let's go to B. Write a rule showing the relationship between the X and Y coordinates of points on the line. This concept here, writing a rule, is a little bit tricky. We start to think about our algebraic thinking or our algebraic concepts. To write a rule, I'm going to look at my section right here. Let me highlight that so we can see. Hang on. All right, right here. I'm going to look at my X and my Y coordinates. So let's think about how we're moving from X to Y. So X starts at zero here, Y is one. So I went up by one to go from zero to one. Let's look at two comma three. My X is two, and the difference between two and three is one. So two plus one is three. Let's look at four comma five. If I'm starting at four, four plus one more is five. The difference between four and five is one. And that is also true for six and seven. Now when I'm thinking about a rule, I'm not really thinking about how I'm plotting them on the coordinate plane. I'm just thinking about the relationship between the number that is X and the number that is Y. And in all of these situations that I'm um, circling right now, or, or that you see the clicker on, the Y is one more than the X. So my rule would be Y is one more than X. This rule, the purpose of the rule, is just to help us figure out more Y coordinates or more X coordinates. So Y is equal to X plus one. So C says name two other points that are on this line. And this is where the rule comes into play. If I know my rule is Y is one more than X, and I need to name two other points on the line, really I can pick any X that hasn't been named so far on the table. I can add one more and that would give me the Y. So for example, 
My first one was 8 common 9. I noticed that we hadn't gotten to an x coordinate of 8 yet on our table, so I decided to use 8. And because my rule is x plus 1, or y is 1 more, I just did 8 plus 1, which is 9, right here. Another one that I picked was 11 comma 12. Again, I noticed that 11 hadn't been used on this table yet for the x coordinates, so I picked 11. And I know that y is 1 more than x, so 11 plus 1 is 12. There are other examples that you could have picked here. If you picked 12, for example, 12 plus 1 is 13, so your coordinate pair would be 12 comma 13. If you pick an x coordinate of 100, 100 plus 1 is 101, so your coordinate pair would be 100 comma 101. Again, the purpose of the rule that we found in B is to help us figure out additional points that are on the coordinate plane. Let's move on to problem two. Problem two is very similar to problem one, except now we're dealing with fractions as well as whole numbers. I'm going to start by looking at the coordinate plane before we read any instructions. I'm noticing the coordinate plane is not labeled. So like we did in the previous one, let's label this one right here. So this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. All right, 2a says, complete the chart, then plot the points on the coordinate plane below. Here's my chart. I have my x and my y coordinates. I need to make them into an ordered pair, so something comma something, and then plot that onto the coordinate plane. Like before, I'll do the first two with you. You'll do the last two by yourself. So for the first one, my x is 1 half, my y is 1. As a coordinate pair, x comma y, that's 1 half comma 1. Now to plot that on the coordinate plane, remember I always start at zero. My x coordinate is one half, so I need to go over one half unit. Between zero and one is one half. Then I need to go vertically one unit. So right there would be one half comma one. Let's do the next one. X is one, y is two. As an ordered pair, the two of them together, that's one comma two. To plot that, I start at 0, 0, 0, comma, 0. I go over one unit on the x-axis, two units on the y-axis vertically, and right there would be 1, comma, 2. Go ahead and plot the remaining two, and we'll go over them in just a bit. All right, so one half, one and one half, I'm sorry, and three is one and one half comma three. To plot, I go over one and one half, go up three units, right there is that uh, point. Last one, two and four, it gives you two comma four. Starting at zero, go over two units, go vertically four units, right there, you have two comma four. Now A says, use a straight edge to draw a line connecting these points. So here is my line connecting these points. And as you're drawing this line, I want you to be really careful about making sure that the line is straight and that your line also connects to the origin at zero comma zero. So it's connecting all of those points and connecting to the origin as well. All right, let's move on to B. Write a rule showing the relationship between the X and Y coordinates. So this is what we just talked about in the previous problem looking at your x coordinates and your y coordinates, trying to find a relationship to think of a rule. So I'm going to look at my x and my y coordinates on the table above. Let me circle the place that I'm going to be looking at, right there. Now, looking at this table, my x coordinate here at 1 half comma 1 starts at 1 half, and my y is 1. Now let's think about the relationship. How can I go from 1 half to 1? Well, I could add 1 half, right? 1 half plus a half is 1. Let's see if that's a rule that holds up with the other coordinate or with the other ordered pairs. Here I'm starting at 1 and I'm going to 2. Well, 
If I use the rule from the first one where we added one half, that rule doesn't really apply here. One plus one half doesn't give me two. So that can't be my rule. That's not my relationship. Let's think about another relationship. From one to two, I added one whole, but that doesn't really match up with what we did in the beginning. So maybe addition isn't really our rule here. Let's think of another operation that can get us from your x to your y. I'm going to do the whole numbers. Those typically tend to be a little bit easier when you're finding your rule. Let's think about multiplication. One times what gets me to two? Times two, okay. Let's see if that matches up with the other whole number pair here. Two times two does get me to four. Maybe my rule here is multiplying by two. Let's use it on the fractions now. If I take one half, the x coordinate, and I multiply one half by two, do I get one whole? I do. One half times two is two wholes. Let me write this on the side. So one half times two, remember you multiply your numerators, one times two is two, your denominator would stay the same, just two wholes, and two twos, two divided by two, is the same as one whole. That same rule also matches up with one and one half times three. One and one half times, sorry, one and one half times two. One and one half times two would also get me to three. So my rule here is y is 2 times x. In all of these cases over here, if you take your x, you take 1 half, you take 1, you take 1 and 1 half, you take 2, and you multiply each of those numbers by 2, then you get the y coordinate, 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1 and 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 and 1 half times 2 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4. So, I'm sorry, I skipped a little bit ahead. Ignore this for now, but I want to continue expanding on this concept. Y is 2 times X. What you're really doing here when you're thinking of your rule is thinking about, am I adding something to go from X to Y? If that doesn't work, am I multiplying something to go from X to Y? If that doesn't work, Am I dividing something? And if that doesn't work, am I subtracting something? You're finding an operation that is helping you skip or go from an X to a Y. That's the relationship. This is a little bit of a different line of thinking that we've, we've used in class, but I want you to practice that a little bit. So for C, name two other points that are on this line. This is where we use the rule to help us figure out additional points. So I accidentally went ahead and put up the first one, three comma six. But the reason I did this is because, or the reason I picked a three, is because I noticed on our table we hadn't plotted a point three yet on the x coordinate. So if I pick an x coordinate, three, I use the rule y is two times x. Well, my x is three and three times two is six. So another point could be three comma six. What you're really doing here is picking an x coordinate any x coordinate and then you're using the rule to find the y. So if you pick an x of 6 for example, y is 2 times x and if my x is 6 then 2 times 6 is 12 so that coordinate pair would be or that ordered pair would be 6 comma 12. Another one that I picked was 3 and 1 half comma 7 just to give you some more practice with that fraction multiplication. I randomly picked three and one half because I noticed we hadn't plotted anything on that yet. So three and one half, I changed that to an improper fraction, that's seven halves. Seven halves times two is seven. So it works out here too. You could pick any x, multiply it by two, that will give you your y coordinate, and then you have your ordered pair, x comma y. Let's do our last one. This is on page 25. Give the coordinates for three points that are on line A. So let's look at the coordinate plane on the left. There's a lot going on here. There are a ton of different lines, but all we need to do here is find line A, and that is the one that my clicker is on. Now it asks me to give the coordinates for three points that are on line A. Notice that in between 0 and 10, 
10 and 20, 20 and 30, the units here are skip counting by twos. So be aware of that as you're naming your coordinate points. Take a few seconds and name three on that line, and I'll tell you which ones I picked. All right, I picked, oh, I'm sorry, should have put this up before, but when I mentioned that we're skip counting by twos, here is a little example of how to label yours. So I first picked four comma four, six comma six, and 10 comma 10. You could have picked other points. You could have picked 14 comma 14. You could have picked 22 comma 22, or 28 comma 28. That's up to you, as long as you picked three points on line A. B says, write a rule that describes the relationship between the X and Y coordinates for the points on line A. So here are my three points. And even if you pick three different points, that's okay. We can use those points to figure out what the rule is. Remember the rule is the number sentence that helps you figure out how you got to y from x. Are you adding something, subtracting something, dividing something, multiplying something, or is it the same? In this case, we notice that the x coordinate is always equal to the y coordinate, six and six. X and y are equal. Here, 10 and 10. X and y are equal. Let's try it again here. I pick 24 on the x coordinate. I notice the y coordinate is also 24. So in many situations along this line of A, x is equal to y. So that would be my rule. The x and y coordinate is the same. And that can help you think of additional points on that line. For example, you notice that this uh, x coordinate stops at 30, and line A doesn't really go beyond that 30. But if I pick an x coordinate of 100, I know the y coordinate is the same as the x, so my ordered pair would be 100 comma 100. 50 comma 50, 1000 comma 1000. The x and y coordinates will always be the same. All right, let's do our last one. We are now at the bottom of page 25. So C, what do you notice about the y coordinates of every point on line B? This is the same coordinate plane that we were just using for problem A. So let us look for line B. And I notice line B is right here. Now the problem asks me, what is what do I notice about the y coordinates for every point on line B? Well, line B is moving along the x axis, but is it really moving on the y axis? It's not. That means the y coordinates are the same for every point of line B. Right here, that y is the same for every single point. D, fill in the missing coordinates for points on line D. Now let's find line D, and line D is right here. So I've been given the X coordinates here, and in this case, I've been given the Y coordinates for some of them, and I'm filling the missing one. I'm going to do the first two, you will do the remaining three by yourself. So 12 is my X coordinate, I'm looking for the Y. So here's line D, here's the point 12. So I go up until I touch the line, I'm now on line D. Then I can go over to figure out what the y coordinate is. And that y coordinate is 6, so 12 comma 6. The next one, 6. Here is 6, and here is line D. Well, I haven't really gotten to line D yet. Here's the line. But I can infer, make an educated guess, that line D would extend downwards this way. And so it would touch the x coordinate as 0. So my unit for that, or my ordered pair, would be 6, 0. I'd like you to do the remaining three and look up to see what your answers are and if they match with mine. All right, so this next one would be 30 comma 24, 28 comma 22, and 34 comma 28.
E. For any point on line C, the X coordinate is blank. Here is line C. And you notice line C is moving vertically in parallel to the Y axis, but it's not really moving along the X axis. That means that the X coordinate for line C, for every point on line C, is the same. And that X coordinate is between 4 and 5, or 4 and 6, which makes the X coordinate 5. F. Each of the points lies in at least one of the lines shown on the plane on the previous page. Identify a line that contains each of the following points. Where it mentions a previous page, this is the coordinate plane that it's referring to. I just happen to have it on the same slide. So let's look at these points. They've done the first one for us. 7, 7 is point A. The second one, 14, 8. Here's 14 on the x-axis, move up until I'm 8 on the y-axis, and that is line D. The next one, 5, 10, C or E, and I can confirm that, right? Here's 5 on the x-axis. I go up until I'm on the y-axis at 10, and there's an intersection there of two lines, line C and line E. So that could be either or. Do the remaining three. All right, zero comma 17. I start at zero. I'm not really moving on the x-axis because my x-coordinate is zero. I would just go up 17 points. And it looks like I'm landing on that horizontal flat line, line B. The next one's a little bit tricky. 15 and 3 tenths, comma, 9 and 3 tenths. And that is line D over here. So here is 15, right? But we don't really have any individual units that are going in tenths. So for these two, you would have to round down. This would be 15, this would be 9. So you would approximate this one or estimate at 15, 9. Here's 15. Scroll up or go up vertically until I'm around 9, and that is on line D. And the last one, 20, 40, is line E. So these two pages to the very left, pages 26 and 27, are your independent practice pages. If you need help with your independent practice pages, you can use your problem set notes, the ones that we just took together, or you can re-watch this video. As you're doing your homework, every question, for example, question one in your homework lines up with question one in your problem set. Question three in your homework lines up with question three in your problem set. So you can use those notes in the video to guide you. If you still have questions, feel free to call me, text me, or email me, and I'd be more than happy to help. Here are some reminders that I'd like to talk to you about for a little bit. Number one, please make sure to watch the ELA and Science Social Studies videos that are also uploaded to this channel. Please don't forget to text us answers to the questions in your work packet. There are specific places where we've indicated that we'd like you to send us pictures of your work. And lastly, don't forget to work on iReady Math and iReady Reading. We would like you to complete a minimum of 45 minutes for each subject. That is all for today. Thank you for watching. Check back in tomorrow for another video. Bye, scholars. Have a great day.